Hello, this tutorial is about Canva, what it is and what it can do for you and a little bit about what the pro and the free version have to offer and how they differ. And I'm going to get into how to make something in Canva using the basic graphic design principles. Okay, so let's get started. When you first come into Canva, you might be a little overwhelmed because you will see all these different choices about what to click on, like which template, uh, what do you want to design with, all these different sizes. And if you are used to a regular graphic design program, such as InDesign, or maybe even just using Microsoft Word, you might be looking for like file new and where can I just make a blank document and get started? So it really helps to have a goal in mind first about what it is you want to design, especially so if you are using the free version because the difference, main difference between the free version and the paid version in my mind is the magic resize feature. That is the best feature, I think, at least for my case, because you can take a design and start designing one thing like a social media post and then make all different sizes. So for example, in this particular version, I have a social media post that is for graphic design in the lower left hand corner and then I can make it into a banner and then I can make it into a YouTube uh, thumbnail and then maybe a bookmark and then maybe even the, the sticker size. So it really great for campaigns. You can just take it and then magically resize it or you can take somebody else's work and magically resize it. Now that is available in the free version, but you'll have to take each individual part and then make a new document and resize it just like you would in a regular uh, graphic design program. Most of the time you just have to resize all those elements. But with the pro version of Canva, it's pretty much one click of a button, and maybe a few adjustments to some things that maybe didn't quite line up the way you wanted it to look like, but that's all it is and you're good to go. So for me, that is the, the selling feature of the pro version. The other features you get are up to five people on your team who also get access to all the pro features. And that includes millions of stock photos. Now the free version gives you 250,000 stock photos and they're all pretty good. But if you want to buy some of them individually, that's a dollar a piece. So that does add up. The other really selling feature is the background remover. I'm not sure I would buy it just for that alone because I have Photoshop. But in a pinch, when you just want to remove a background, it does an amazing job. It does really great around the hair and all that kind of thing. So I'll do a demonstration of that as well. And in addition to doing print layouts, you can do video now and audio tracks and lots of presentations with up to 100 pages in your documents. And you can mock up uh, t-shirts and designs on mugs and you can also hook up your data in a spreadsheet and create nice graphs as well so they keep adding new features all the time but i'm going to get into just the basics of how to use it so as i said they also have templates as well and that's what they really push you to go for their templates are very professionally designed in almost any subject that you want to use using those basic design principles that i talked about so let's get started. I am going to take this quote right here. It's only possible to live happily ever after on a daily basis by Margaret Bonanno and use the four principles of graphic design, which if you've studied graphic design at all, will be familiar with you. And then use Canva to do this. So you've seen those little motivational poster type things you get in the mail. Well, that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to escape from this. And here I am still in Canva and you can see, and here is my slideshow that I was just presenting from. I'm showing you this because I want you to see that you can put a, uh, you can create a PowerPoint style slideshow in Canva as well as a bunch of other things. You can also upload your PowerPoint presentation and then use Canva in order to um, change it all around. But that's not what I'm gonna go over with today. I'm going to just show you all around Canva and how to use it and create something from scratch using some of the, the, the features that they have. And so to do that, I'm gonna go back to the home page by clicking that home button in the upper left-hand corner. And this is gonna be the view that you come in and see from the get-go. And there's a lot of duplicate information over here. So for example, what will you design? Create a design up in the upper right hand corner, um, maybe a presentation, social media. Then again, we have present presentation and all of this might change depending on what you click on. So it kind of knows you. And as you 
scroll on down the page down in this area this is stuff that i've recently been working on and so i can kind of look through my past files so you'll see that down below and then over on the left hand side you're going to see again your projects then some more templates and if you look over here we just have whole piles of templates to try so that can be kind of overwhelming. Also, up here at the top, there is some learning resources available, but you might be looking for that file new and you're not going to find it over here. You can say, you know, I worked with somebody who's like, I just want to create a new blank document. What do I do? Um, actually, the best way is to start with a template and then delete that. So let me show you what I mean. So I was going to take that quote and then make a flyer out of it. So you can either click create design in the upper right hand corner and you can start typing flyer and again it's going to give you some suggestions on what to put up there so um you, yeah like a landscape portrait if you hover over these you get kind of the uh the width and height of what that is in images but you know you just want an eight and a half by eleven regular piece of paper flyer so you could do it you could hit enter that way or you could click custom size down here and put in those custom sizes if you had something even more specific um, no matter what you do you're still going to get a template type approach you can also do it here so i'll say flyer so two different ways to do the same thing rather than select something i'm just going to hit return or enter so then when after you hit enter you're still presented with all these different flyers to choose from so it might be distracting to see all these things you can even narrow it down by the type you want a happy one a simple one a minimalistic one I, again i just wanted a blank document so i can click any one of these and start with that the only thing you want to be aware of is see where it says pro right here in the lower right hand corner that means you have to pay for that particular one so just pick one that doesn't have that on it you can click on it and just start working or you can click these three dots here and say preview this template the reason why that might be important is you just want to verify that this is the right size like i said it is hard to resize this later if you want it in a different size so it's good to know off the get-go what size you want so yeah, eight and a half by 11, this is what I want. I'm gonna say customize this template. So it has nothing to do with that quote that I did, um, but you know, it's like, oh, okay, these are nice little elements and stuff like that. If I select all, or I can just drag my cursor over this and select everything here, and it's selecting all the elements that I could modify if I want to, but I don't want any of these. So I just selected them all and I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard. So now I'm back to my blank screen. I have a white background. If I wanted to change that to a particular color, I could by clicking this little rainbow swatch right here. And then I could just pick a color from this list. I can hit the plus right here and I can get a very specific color I want. I can even put in the hex code, you know, the web code color if I want to, or I can just click a blue right here. Maybe even uh, now that I've clicked this blue, I can click this plus button and then make it even a lighter blue, like, like so. So there, I've started out with my light blue flyer. Okay, so now I wanna add some text into this page. How do I do that? How do I just start typing text in this page? Well, over on the left-hand side, you have some more, more um, icons and you might have a different mix of things you see there because it's based on your um, what you do on this program, but there is gonna be that T there. So you could click on that, that kind of makes sense. But then again, you have all these kind of like pro things that they're trying to push your way, uh, different ways of type treatments and stuff like that. You have add a heading, you have subheading. Uh, you know what? The simplest thing to do is to put your cursor in the middle of the page and press the letter T. And then you can just start typing. So um, I had copied and pasted that quote, so I copied that quote. And so there's my quote, I pasted it in, now it's in a text box. There you go, you're ready to start formatting it up. On the, on the top, you have these formatting tools. So that kind of makes sense. You can bold everything if you want to. Um, so if I select all of this in the text, I can just click bold and now it's bold. So there it is. I'm gonna undo that so we get back to normal. Okay, so here's my text. I can click in the middle of this text and then move it around. As you can see, these little vertical and um, vertical and horizontal lines come up and that tells me that I'm exactly center and uh, horizontally center. Vertical and horizontally center, I can't say it. And get it going right here yeah, and getting there closer. Yeah, uh, well, you get the idea. It's actually easier if I 
grab this lower right hand corner and then I can make the I can resize the font bigger smaller bigger smaller or I can grab the side of it and then change the box like that so it changes the wrap so now let's move it around so I can get that center I usually there we go cross here oh, got it okay <laughs> So now I have it in the center of the page. It's a bit boring. There's not much going on. So I am going to, as a scratch pad, add a page to this so I can play around with stuff. And what I want to do is I want to bring in some text from another document. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard again. And I'm going to paste in here these letters. Get bigger. And I am actually pressing some keyboard command keys on my hand keyboard to make it bigger, but I can just grab this again and make it bigger like that. And if I want to change that typeface on this, make it bigger this way, grab the edge of this, make it bigger. Okay. Yes, I did write crap on the page <laughs> because if you've studied graphic design at all, you'll understand what I mean. So I can change the typeface up here and I get so many different typefaces to choose from. Uh, again, this is the pro feature if you want to upload your own typeface, but it has so many to choose from. So I'm just going to choose something like Cooper Heavy, uh, which is kind of a nice big bold font. So there we go, Cooper Heavy. And I am going to copy this font, move it over on here like this, and move this out like that. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Contrast. Put in my C and repetition. This is the second time I've done this video because I misspelled repetition. Yeah. And alignment does not have spell check. Canva does not have spell check. Very necessary thing for me. So you actually have to rely on the browser to make sure you are spelling things correctly. So um, now that's not lining up quite right. And so up here at the top, you can just click this alignment button and then everything lines up. And so where am I getting with this? Let's do, um, uh, we don't want this heavy. We want to have it thin, say. Let's do it thin. And that way we have this acronym of CRAP <laughs> stands out a little bit better. So. The four principles of graphic design, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. If you can achieve those results in your designs, then that really helps you along the way. And if you look at a lot of the Canva templates, templates that they have, you can see that they utilize these basic principles. So the first thing we want to do is contrast. So we can achieve that, of course, by weight. So let's give it a, a thicker weight on this. Now, in order to format the the quote differently from the uh, attribution, you're going to have to make them in separate text boxes because the effect that you apply to the box will do everything that is there. So I'm going to cut that out a little different than some layout programs, T and paste it in. So there we go. And we have it down below and I already did it as a different font face. And then again, I can zoom in and out by this button down here on the bottom. Okay. So now that I got that one, I am going to choose that Cooper heavy makes it nice and big. And let's make this uh, bigger, 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 bigger. So it gives it some nice contrast. And let's make this smaller, or let's make it italic. And one thing we need to know when we're mixing font faces to give a contrast, you usually want to mix a sans serif typeface with a uh, serif typeface. So what I mean by that, if you don't know what that is, T, I'll do another T, and then copy another one there. Okay, so we got two Ts. Both of these Ts are sans serif typefaces. Sans meaning no serif. Sans means no in, I don't know what, Latin, I guess. Um, so, but a serif typeface means it has a serif, and those are those little wingy things on the end. So what's kind of cool is I can go up here to the typeface, and I don't know exactly what kind of serif typeface I want. But if I just type in the type that I want, say I want, they're giving me a suggestion of calligraphy, or I just want a serif typeface of some sort. So show me all your serif stuff. So I'm going to choose, I don't know, droid serif, 
there we go, there it is. So you can see that this is one type of, is a serif typeface and a sans serif typeface, and this is a serif typeface. Okay, so with all that being said, I'm gonna highlight this one and choose Droid. There we go. And so now we have a nice contrasting typeface with this, bring it up, and then it's closer to it. Now notice I brought it up closer to it, uh, the, the quote. So if I were to take this and move it all the way down here to the bottom, obviously, what is this doing out here? It's not close in proximity. I think everybody knows that, but that's where the proximity is. Think about those elements. You might be arranging them on the page. It's like, oh, let's just fill up the space. But what goes with what's like the time or registering for event? Think about the proximity. So it should be close to that item. Okay, so I got some contrast going. I need some repetition. What repetition? Why? Repetition is used for humans because they like to be drawn to a pattern. And the pattern is supposed to tell them where to go. So you're going to use your repetition pattern in order to draw your eye to what it is you want them to look at. So that's kind of your basic rule of design. Now you can always break these rules, but knowing these really help. Okay, so I got this boring blue blue background. So maybe I want to add in a different background. Uh, let's look here. I think there's a background button over here, so I can try that and see. Let's see if I come up with something under here. Sunburst, nothing there. Let's try under elements. And what elements are, are graphic design elements. Um, so if I don't find a background that I like under that, I'm going to try it under elements. And let's try L, uh, no, sunburst, sunburst. All right. So I'm seeing the one that I like. It's actually a pro version. Um, I can also go up here and narrow down my search by clicking on photos. So I'll see like photos of something. Um, I can click on graphics and choose that. And that's actually not bad. I can choose a video. Um, I can also click on up here. There's like a way to refine your search. So I can choose whether they're animated, static, horizontal. I can even choose a color scheme if I want to. But I'm just going to go, oops, I lost my search now. Sunburst. sunburst. Give me my sunburst back. Okay, there it is. So there's my sunburst. So in order to add it to the background, I could click that. But then it's right in the center of the page. It's not filling it up. So um, instead, what you do is you take it and you drag it until it kind of locks over that. And then that frame grabs it. I could kind of put it in, like, if there was another box on the page, it would grab into that box. So you're just kind of hovering it over the box that you want it to go to. So it's bound by that. But what if I wanted to resize it? So I could just double click on that image, and you're kind of seeing a ghosting of what it looks like on the side, and I can make it even bigger if I want to, and then recenter it how I want on the page. So that is one design. I'm... I'm kind of happy with it um but i can take this a step further and this is the way i tend to design is i make a bunch of them so i'm only doing one flyer but i can use this as kind of my scratch pad so up here at the top i could delete this if i want to i could add a new document or you know a new blank page to this or i can just duplicate this make another one so i'm still keeping my original and so i have this here and then maybe i want a different background okay uh, let's try um, sunflowers. I'm going sunny because, you know, it's seamless sunflower. It's, you know, it's kind of what it's about, right? It's uh, being happy. Yeah, there we go. And the reason I kind of knew, I, I saw this before. Like I said, I did this video once, but I had a spelling error, so I had to do it again. <laughs> um, so I kind of like this one. I'm going to go with this one. Put that in there. Now that's kind of busy, right? Um, but I do like the graphics, but it's kind of busy. So I want to put something behind it. Now I could put a square. Um, let's try a circle. Okay, so here's a circle. Put this on here. Now, that's obviously not a very pretty color. But when I click on it, sometimes I can edit that image. This one's not allowing me to. So I'm going to try a different one. Uh, let's try this one. Yes. Now, when I click on that, I'm looking up here at the top and it's allowing me to change these colors. Now, that gray, I think, is a outline on this. So let's try changing this white here and I can make that a blue. So it's just kind of a blue color. And then um, I have it here and it's actually behind the 
behind the image, but if it was behind the text, but if sometimes it might be that you put it in over the top. So these kind of layer over top of one another. So up here at the top, it says position. I can actually bring this forward and I could cover up the text if I want to. But, and, and the reverse, I can also send it backwards if I want to, just by clicking those buttons backwards and forwards. I can even align it to the, the center of the page. I can uh, there align it to the center of the page if I want to, but I don't really want to. Just have it right there. Okay. So I have it in the background, kind of covering it up, but it's covering up my flowers. So I can actually change the transparency of this graphic too and make it just a little bit transparent. So it kind of peeks and sees through. I can also make these background flowers here a little less bright by doing that. So it's just a light thing. All right, so I'm playing around with that. I, yeah, I'm not in love with it. I'm gonna play around with it some more. So here's another thing you could do. You can apply t effects to the text. So if I click on the text, then um, once I click on it, up here um, you get some more formatting options. I can change the color of the text here. That's kind of straightforward. Or I can, oh, and then I can use colors that are actually from the document. So I could change it to maybe that color. I'm just gonna stay, stay with black for the moment. But up here at the top where it says effects, I can add, of course, a drop shadow to it. But this one is kind of a neat one here. I can choose a background of that. So when I click on that, that gives that kind of Instagram effect where it outlines something. Um, again, I think I'm going to use, if I um, click on this swatch here, I can choose the document colors, the colors that are actually in the document. Um, but it's not picking up that yellow that I'm looking at. But uh, this yellow is similar. So let's do that. It kind of matches some of the yellow that's there. And um, I can make it more round. I can make the spread more bigger. Um, I can even change the transparency if I want to. I want to make it bolder, more spread. And if I make that text even larger, I think uh, that kind of looks good. So it takes up the space of the page a little bit better. So that gives me some nice contrast. And I think the text, the, the attribution needs it as well. So I can do that as a different color using that effect. So here's the background and then I can change the background to black. But then of course I can't read the text. So I need to change the text by highlighting it and then change that to white. Okay, so now I have created that contrast. I have my repeating element, not in love with this background square I'm gonna make this even more bright because I can because I do have that um, in there and one thing to note um, if you can't double up on your effects so if I try to add a drop shot of this it's going to delete the previous background um, effect that I applied to that so if you want to create that kind of thing where you're doubling up your effects you'll probably have to kind of layer some things and do some little tricks like that. So good things to know, you can do that more in a, a traditional layout program. Okay, so now what if I'm looking at my designs, I have a couple of different options, and I still like this sunny thing best, but I think I do like the contrast of just having that uh, attribution like that. So instead, I'm going to replace that out. And again, I wanna keep that close to it because of proximity. And there's my design. I do like the larger size on that. So I'm gonna go with that on a daily basis. And I have that up there like this. And let's bring it down like that. And there we go. You have to fiddle with that a little bit. There we go. Um, I think that looks a little bit better. Nice and bold. Um, Marco Bonanno was the writer for Star Trek. <laughs> so uh, I think somehow this just kind of works with that that I think. So I got my design. I played around. I've learned about these background elements on here. What do I do next? Now I want to share it out. So up here in the upper right is the share button. Get my face out of the way here. Up here on the right is the share button. I can share it with a colleague and they could work with it if they want to. But I just want to download, download this to print it. I'm not going to send it anywhere. I'm not going to put it on social media. Um, so I click the download button to print it 
and I got some options. So there's, it always wants to give you PNG as a suggested option for something that doesn't have animation in it. Because that is the kind of the best looking quality for an image itself, a photographic image. But since this has text in it, you click that on this and you probably want to pick PDF for print. And that will create the crispest text possible when you're going to go print it. PDF standard is for when you're sending it through email. So it makes a smaller file size. You could do a JPEG um, as long as you make it the maximum resolution on that. So if I did JPEG, then I would want to make this quality all the way up. But I am going to choose the PDF. SVG, again, is for um, illustration purposes, and it is a pro feature. MP4, video, and GIF would be a recommended option if there was an animation in this, this document. Um, I'll show you how to do that next, the animation part. But for right now, I'll do the, the PDF. And then I would just hit download. But before I do that, <laughs> you don't want to download all your scratch stuff that's there. So it would be downloading all this stuff as a multi-page document. So we just want to click on this and de-click everything and then just choose the page that has what you want on it. And in this case, it's page one. And so then if I click done and then download, then it's going to download that PDF to my computer and then I can print it. Um, so that is that option. So I, I've done it. But I can also do multiple outputs of it. Click cancel because I don't need to say that. So I can click sh uh, share again. And so I could say download on this. And if I were to choose PNG, which I don't need to because I don't really have any transparency on it, um, I have that option. But here's the thing. I would have to click the transparent background check mark, which is a pro feature. So you don't get that option anyway. You can download it as a PNG, but you're not going to benefit from that transparency option unless you have a paid version and you click that transparent background. So good to note. Okay. So now what if I wanted to animate this? It's a quick way you can animate this. So you could click on your graphic and then you can click this button here that just says animate and you have some options to animate the the elements that are on this page so you can just have it fly in you can have it bounce in you can have it stomp in i'll go with stomp there you go and it's now animated you can um preview it by clicking this little button up here and you can preview how it looks move this off to the side so it just does it once um, then it's going through the other options so you can also change the timing on this and make it longer. So there's my timing. It's going to, I don't know, it's really long. I wouldn't do that normally, but just for demo purposes, there we go. Just a little bit, not quite as hyperactive. Then if I were to hit share on this now, click download, it's going to recommend the MP4. So if you're sharing this out to social media, this would be good for an MP4 or a video that you're sharing and just would upload it to say Instagram or something like that. It would be too big if you were doing an animated GIF because it's multi-frame, smooth animation. Again, GIF is for those short little video clips. So I hope that was helpful on this. Um, and that is how you make a design. Now, if I click the home button up here, I should see in my list, maybe, Yes, I don't. <laughs> in my list, I do not see the one that I worked on. I see the other one that I tried and made a spelling error, <laughs> but I don't see the one that I just did. I, what I see is an image of that template that I chose. And the reason being is that this is a cloud-based program. It takes a while to catch up. So the next time I log in here, it will probably have the correct thumbnail of what it is I worked on. So I know what it was, um, but just keep in mind this is a cloud-based app and that sometimes you can lose your work or it'll lock up on you so as you're working especially if you're working on a big document or a long document or putting a lot of your time in it make multiple copies of this because like i said this is one of the differences between a app that lives on your computer and one that lives on the cloud it's a great program it's changing all the time but it's still cloud-based and it's based on your internet connection and um, a lot of other factors of the universe. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful. And that's the basics of how to just get started on Canva, but just keep playing around. And the more you play, like I was playing, the more you'll start learning some of these 
these uh, different uh, controls and things you do. All right. Hope that was helpful.